Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our medical podcast series at MedSynapse. Joining us today is Dr. Vidya Kolu, a distinguished specialist in hematology and oncology at the Genesis Health System in the United States. In today's episode, we will be discussing another important topic with Dr. Kolu that affects many patients and your families, the staging of cancer. Welcome, Dr. Kolu. Thank you, Dr. Nigar. I'm excited to be here and share my knowledge on cancer staging. Thank you so much for joining us on this important topic. Now, to start off, could you explain what cancer staging is and why is it important for both healthcare providers and patients at the same time? Certainly, uh, cancer staging is the process of determining the extent to which cancer has spread in the body it helps healthcare providers understand the severity of the disease, plan appropriate treatment strategies, and estimate the patient's prognosis. For patients and their families, understanding the stage of cancer can provide valuable information about treatment options and potential outcomes. I believe that this information is very essential for healthcare providers as it guides in treatment decision and helps estimate the prognosis. Also, when it comes to patients, I believe understanding the cancer stage provides them with insights into their condition and the potential treatment options that they can that is available for them. Absolutely. Now, let's discuss the differences between staging for blood cancers and solid tumor cancers. How are they distinct? Blood cancers such as leukemia and lymphoma are typically staged differently than solid tumor cancers. In blood cancers, staging often involves assessing the involvement of different organs like lymph nodes and bone marrow. This is done through blood tests, bone marrow biopsies and imaging studies that we have discussed in the previous episodes. Uh, and the stages in blood cancers are usually classified as low, intermediate and high risk based on the extent of disease involvement. On the other hand, solid tumor cancers like breast, lung, pancreatic or colon cancers are staged based on the size of the tumor its invasion into the nearby tissues, lymph node involvement, and the presence of distant metastasis. The stages of solid tumors are often categorized using a numerical system with stage zero indicating a non-invasive cancer and higher stages indicating increasing severity and spread of the disease. And this is kind of different when you're comparing blood cancers with the solid cancers. And usually in blood cancers, having a stage four doesn't mean that they usually have a bad prognosis compared to how it applies in solid tumors. And this is a very important distinction for healthcare providers and patients and families to make to know the outcomes from the cancer. Now let's delve into the clinical and prognostic implications of each stage. Could you please explain what this means in simpler terms for our listeners? Of course. Uh, So when we talk about clinical implications, we are referring to how the stage of cancer affects the treatment options and strategies. For example, early stage cancers are often treated with surgery and localized therapy, while advanced stage cancers may require a combination of surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or targeted therapies. And prognostic implications, on the other hand, related to the expected outcome or prognosis for a patient with a specific stage of cancer. Generally, lower stages such as stage 1 or 2 have a better prognosis, meaning a higher likelihood of successful treatment and longer survival. Higher stages such as stage 3 or stage 4 indicate a more advanced disease and may have a poorer prognosis, especially as it relates to the solid tumors. Thank you for breaking that down, Dr. Kolo. Now let's discuss some examples to help our listeners understand the clinical and prognostic implications better. Could we provide an example for a specific stage in blood cancer? Sure. Uh, So let's take the example of stage 3 lymphoma. In this stage, the cancer has spread to multiple lymph nodes and may have affected other organs as well. The clinical implication would be that the patient would likely require a combination of chemotherapy and radiation therapy to treat the disease. The prognosis for stage 3 lymphoma varies depending on factors such as the specific subtype of lymphoma and the patient's overall health, but it generally carries a more 
guarded prognosis compared to an earlier stage and the likelihood of getting into a remission with the treatments. Now, let's move on to a solid tumor cancer. Can you provide an example for a specific stage in a solid tumor cancer? Certainly, let's consider stage 2 breast cancer. So in this stage, the tumor has grown larger and may have invaded nearby tissues, but it has not spread to uh, any distant sites. Uh, the clinical implication would be that the patient would likely undergo surgery to remove the tumor, followed by additional treatments such as radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and endocrine therapy. The prognosis for stage 2 breast cancer is generally favorable with a good chance of successful treatment and long-term survival when all the right treatment modalities are used. Thank you, Dr. Kaldiv, for explaining the clinical and prognostic implications of different stages in both the blood cancer and the solid tumor cancers. I believe this information is very valuable for healthcare providers and patients alike. Well, you're welcome, Dr. Nigar. I'm glad I could contribute to this important discussion uh, on staging. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaldiv. Now that concludes today's episode of MedSynapse. We hope you found this discussion on cancer staging helpful. Remember, understanding the stage of cancer is crucial for guiding treatment decisions and providing patients and their families with a better understanding of their condition. Thank you for tuning in and stay tuned for more episodes where we explore various aspects of medicine. Join us as an active member on our MedSynapse platform where you can discuss, engage, and exchange knowledge with doctors around the world. That's all for today. Goodbye for now.